Welcome back to Rockstar 101. His name is Brandon. He is the DJ. His name is Shim. He is the rock star. Class is in session. And in case you didn't know this, Shim has a little thing called the Hollywood Rebellion. You can find it over on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash the Hollywood Rebellion. And I do believe did, we talked about it a couple episodes ago. The Mike Shinoda raid that didn't happen. Or did we talk about that off? We, we might have talked about it off the podcast. So this is what happened. So here's what here's what's up for people that don't understand, because a lot of people are still coming around to this. All right. In the live streaming world on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Hollywood Rebellion, uh, you're doing your live stream, people are watching what you do, and when, when you say, hey, i got to sign off, time to get to sleep or whatever, what you do is you raid another person's channel. So you send your audience to another person's stream, and then usually a lot of people bounce off, but you'll it, it promotes a person who you like that you want to give props to or give some exposure to and it's a really great way to help develop the community yeah mike shinoda from lincoln park is streaming on the regular uh he's actually really fucking good at uh sticking to a schedule i'm not uh he'll do he does um 10 a.m to 1 p.m pacific standard time five days a week like a regular show because he's a, he's a baller and he he's got it down i on the other hand stream whenever the fuck I can for as long as I can until my voice blows out and my eyes are red and I'm tweaking out and talking in circles. Literally, I start to talk in reverse. When I start to get, 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 that's when I know that I'm starting to snap and I'm too tired. So for anyone who's listening, they probably just were like, whoa, what's wrong with my phone? Um, so, <laughs> so what happened is, as a result, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is 5 a or 6 in the morning for me. So to be ready and on stream for the better part of a thousand people to suddenly show up in my stream, I've got to wake up at about 4 to wake up, have oh. breakfast, warm up, and do all that sort of stuff. So I got up. Um, I actually got up at 5 the first time and was streaming by 10 to 5, 10 to 6. Sorry, I was streaming by 10 to 6. And he finished... Um, it, it turned out what what happens is he has mods, he has people, moderators who help him with the stream because he's got over a thousand people every stream. And they check to make sure. So what happens is people who watch his stream uh, can accrue enough points to cash in a raid. So they can say, we nominate Shim for you to raid. And someone, uh, someone had basically uh, cashed in one of their raids and said like, yo, Hollywood Rebellion, what happens is because I'm not awake, I just get put to the back of the queue. So I had to wake mm -hmm. up and be ready. So I woke up and I was ready, but I wasn't ready in time. They'd already gone through and picked who they were going to raid that time. So I was like, hi, I'm ready to be raided. I'm all ready to sing and dance and do shit. And they were like, oh. They checked, they checked 20 it. minutes yeah. before they were wrapping up, yeah. but you logged in 10 minutes before. Exactly. It was closer to five, 15. So I was a couple of minutes late and then I missed it. So then I was like, all right. I just got pissed. I was like, man, Fuck this. All right, I'm just going to wake up at four and be streaming at five. <laughs> I can't do that too long or my tooth will pop right. out. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I was pissed. I'm like, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to start streaming at five and just be on and be ready. And like, but here's the dope thing, right? I had this whole thing planned, right? Because I've got a cover song of um, Waiting for the End by Linkin Park that I've done for an upcoming. It's, I, I've been working on it for a couple of years. It's basically an album of covers called an album of covers called "Here's to the Ones That We Lost," and it's um. Yeah. An Slow down. We've talked about it on the podcast. Cool. So I played it for the first time, uh, and I had cue cards. Did you play it? Hold on. Did you play it live? No. Or are you pl did played you play the, the recording. recording? Played the recording. Okay. The final recording that's finished. Um, and I held up cue cards while it was playing saying, hey, thanks for coming. I'm Shim from the Hollywood Rebellion. You might know me from Sick Puppies. A whole little slideshow, right? And they loved it. And there was all these chicks. You're adorable. I'm such a dork, man. And, um, but it was premeditated as fuck. It was really funny when the raid started. It took me like a second to go and push play and start the cue cards. So there was like a couple of minutes, of si a couple of seconds of silence. And that's not good. You, if you get a thousand people suddenly showing up, you want to start going straight away. And they were like, what's going on? I started doing Question. it. Yeah. So do the, is, is it a thing where he hits a button yeah. and immediately it flips over to your stream or do they all go on their own? No, it flips over to your stream. 
Literally, okay. they're watching him and then it just goes and then suddenly it cuts straight to me. So if I'm in the middle of a song, it's like you have to be like singing and go, oh, hey, thanks for showing up. And then if you want to change the song or do something that's designed for a raid, like a lot of people have a raid song or a raid thing that they do to say, welcome mm -hmm. to my stream. I had planned this like a couple of weeks in advance where I was like, I'm going to push play on the song. They know this song. Everyone loves that song. And I, I'm really happy with my version of the song. And mm. there was all these people in the chat that were like, oh, look who was prepared. Oh, look who's working the system. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> fucking yeah. This is, a, this is the game. And then after like one minute, everyone was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. This is amazing. I got like 200 follows in two minutes. There you go. And it worked. The dope thing was that I found out this morning that um, I didn't wake up at four in the morning. I woke up at like six, like I normally do. And I got a text from a couple of people that were like, hey, so... They were talking about you on Mike's stream. Oh, all mm -hmm. the people in the chat were like, oh, can we raid Hollywood Rebellion again? That guy was cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, let's just, keep, <laughs> let's just keep doing that. I'll just keep doing the same thing. Basically, six in the morning, I'll start singing a cover set. I'll learn a whole bunch of fucking Linkin Park songs to make everyone happy and be like, yo, yeah, come and hang out all the time on Twitch. Let's reconnect with the fan base and get a whole bunch of new followers and work that system. And get it go. going. Yeah, man. <clears throat> So um so it was successful. It was very successful. It was very good. And if you want so if anybody wants to check out your raid uh, or, or I should say it's te it would technically Mike Shinoda's raid of your Twitch stream, mm -hmm. they can find that at twitchtv Rebellion, and it will be it's saved there. Yeah. Like it, it does kind of what you what YouTube does where you're streaming live and then it saves that video. So if you're listening to this as a podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube or whatever it may be, make sure you go to head over to Twitch and uh, go to the Hollywood Rebellion, and you can actually see what Shim is talking about and hear his version of the song. Because yes. I don't think I've heard, I don't think I've heard the finished version. I heard an early version right. of it, but I don't think you ever sent me the actual finished version of it. So I'm gonna, I'll I go can't. Check I'm, that not gonna, out. I'm not gonna send anyone. I'm gonna save it, and I'm only gonna play it on those raids for when those raids happen until the record's done. Then when the record's done, I will release it properly. You should do just all Lincoln Park. Do do a whole set of Linkin Park or a whole album of Linkin Park covers? Well, I th well, just like cover the different songs when they raid you. I think, oh God, what was the song that they just got beat up for because it was so poppy? It was like the last single that they had. Was it a ballad? God, I can't remember. Huh? Was it a ballad? I See, we've talked yeah, it had about the pop this. Singer. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we've we talked, have. We've talked about this. This was a real fucking thorn in my side when uh, Chester passed. It really fucking pissed me off that everyone was trashing that album, and they were promoting it at the time, and that people were like, "Dude, Lincoln Park, it's changed, and it's not the same, and this sucks." And then Chester passed away, and they were like, "Oh no, it's like it didn't happen." And I'm like, "You people have no fucking." conviction like if you back well, a band back a band you can yeah. say you don't like it so fucking this this dude i've got this error message just came up again this if you back if you don't like a band's album that's fine but to go in and say the whole band now sucks and to try to discredit yeah. their previous work or whatever it's like it's just bullshit it's like if they yeah I, it bugs me because i do this for a living and so, it, and then when they revert back around because the culture shifted back to, oh, wait, no, he's passed. He has this amazing legacy that's greater than most any other singer in the history of hard rock. Mm -hmm. And then they just fucking jump on the train. Like, oh, yeah, he's great. We forgot. Fuck you. Yeah, the song, the song was heavy because it was featuring, I believe you pronounce it Kiara. And that was the song that uh, a lot of people were basically raking him over the coals for. Um, okay, so we covered the Mike Shinoda raid. I got something I got to ask you. Mm. What the hell is your problem with the tooth fairy, dude? <laughs> you saw that one, eh? I, yeah, you put this on your Twitter. Again, if you want to check out Shim over on Twitter, it's at Shim Moore. And he has this like 60 second rant where he is just ranting and raving about the tooth fairy. I have a problem with the way that the tooth fairy believes that she can use the concept of inflation to her advantage. That's what I don't like. Okay. I think that okay. she's got. Uh, I think that her, her view on the actuality of reality of the real world outside of the Fantasia that she comes from is not fair. I think that she's following the structure of Wall Street. She's probably going on Google and just looking at the most recent stats and going, well, this is inflation and not keeping in mind that there are parents who are struggling right now due to COVID. And they can't how afford... Much is, how much are they expecting 20 uh, bucks the a tooth fairy to keep... 20 bucks a tooth. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this is only because... So here's because the deal. 
This is this is we, market value. This is market value of a tooth, and it's known by yeah. kids in the market because what? they talk to each other at school and they say, "Well, I get twenty dollars a tooth." And so then, if you don't give your kid twenty dollars a tooth, you're devaluing their tooth, therefore them stem. And now you got to deal with this. It's a par- parenting problem that's being exacerbated by the greedy nature of the tooth fairy industry. The one advantage that we have is that my kids. Uh, parents from her biological dad, yeah. um, her grandparents, when she loses a tooth, they give her 20 bucks. Yeah. So now you're, you're, you're fucked. <laughs> it's so fucked up. No, 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 no. We, we were like, no, the tooth fairy gave it to her, t- gave it to them to give to you. Oh, so you don't have to give her 30 bucks, right? Oh, hell no. Hell no. Okay. But I do agree with you. What is she going to spend it on? Oh, no, that's my point. This is my point. I'm like, I understand when I was, here's the thing. This is, this is an interesting thing, right? That I don't think was in the video. There was a magical element when I was a kid that came to the concept of being given a coin. It makes sense with a coin because a coin is around the same size ish as a tooth, right? It's like a tit for tat. It's a trade off. Whereas a note is a whole fucking long piece of paper for this little tooth. Whereas the 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 coin thing. Fucking bigger your teeth, man. No, I know, I know, but it's it's small than a fucking note, okay? Whereas you can't give twenty dollars in coins. You're gonna give them a twenty dollar note, right? And and who rolls? I mean, I think of the tooth fairy with this big fucking gangster roll of twenties, just like doling them out. Like, like it's just not making it rain yeah, just making kids. it rain. She's like yo, through the air. What? The? Yo, yo, go go yeah, <laughs> go buy yourself something nice. <laughs> um, Here's a twenty. Yeah. Oh my! But like, I just I I I think that <clears throat> when when I was a kid. We didn't. Uh, this is probably very different culturally. We're talking about the cultural differences between America and Australia and Rockstar 101. You guys put it under your pillow, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it doesn't always work that way. What do you What do you do? But that's what you're supposed. That's what you're supposed to do. What do you do? We We try to, but I, I man, you know, because remember, I go to bed early, so I remind my wife. I'm like, make sure the tooth's under there. <laughs> doesn't always end up under there. <laughs> if me, I used to have them. Um, th- they put it in a cup of water next to my bed right and they, okay. they take the tooth they put it in a cup of water and uh and i'd have a cup of water next to my bed anyway like the one you're drinking right now and then have a second little ah, cup it's, so it's like good. a little magical cup and the, and the, the the idea was well you know sound travels more through water sound, uh, water is a better conductor like it, dolphins can yeah. hear sound waves high-pitched sound waves the magical waves that signal the tooth fairy, it actually amplifies them so that you're more likely to get a higher amount. Instead of $1, you might get a $2 coin. And I remember that because it was magical. It wasn't yeah. extortion and inflation and what the <laughs> fuck am I going to spend it on? Yeah. And like a dollar, a dollar coin, like we, we have five, well, when I was, no, we still have, we have five, five, 10, 20, 50, $1 and $2 coins. We don't have pennies here. So you'd get like, when I was a kid, it'd be between 20, 50 and $1. That's what you get, depending on how good you had been. And it's a great mm-hmm. little mechanism to be like, if you've been a little shit, okay, you get 20 cents and you can buy a lolly with 20 cents, a couple of lollies. If you get a buck, you can buy a full bag of lollies and it's a full set, you know, great treat. If you've, if you've like saved a whale, you get $2. You know, if you've done some real oh. gangster shit, but yeah. But Impressive. I remember that magical element of it. And now it's just, but the funny thing is, it, I, I remember, it's just reminding me, this conversation is just reminding me of something that happened as well. <clears throat> the concept of money to children, the, 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 the way that they value things and the way that money is introduced to them. This is why I was so passionate about it because I was like, this is the first time that I've had to deal with explaining the value of money to my kid because they're going to start losing their teeth soon and they're going to mm-hmm. compare their value and their monetary value and what they're given or which they haven't fucking earned to other kids and now it's a whole mess. It's a whole men- stature, stature in the social construct. Fucking fuck that shit, right? It's, it's, it's like you got to pay attention to this stuff as a parent. So um, I remember... My grandfather, who was a um, jazz musician, one of the most famous jazz musicians in the history of Australia back in the 40s, 50s, he would send me a $50 note on my birthday every year. When back in that time, mm-hmm. 50 bucks, big, big deal. It's like a couple hundred yeah. bucks now, right? Yeah, and, and, yeah. and I remember that I used to be so enamored and amazed for the first couple of years when he'd send me 50 bucks. But then after like three or four years, I was like, all right, cool. So I can plan for that 50. That's coming. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to my dad about something and I wanted something. 
and uh, and he was like, he was trying to instill in me the concept of earning the money, pocket money, doing chores, doing odd jobs, earning the money value. And, and then mm. I hit, I hit the amount of money that I needed minus 50 and I stopped doing shit. And he was like, well, how come Cause you, you knew that 50 was yeah, coming in for yeah. your birthday? And, and I remember I was like, uh, he, he was like a couple of weeks later, he was like, you stopped doing all this stuff. Like what, what you, I can't, I can't give you that money that we made a deal about. And I said, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I was so fucking, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that shit anymore. It's like, why? Well, cause I hit the number and the fifties coming. It was like three weeks and that fifties coming. And I remember he looked at me with this, this frustration of like, yes, you're correct. I'm very proud of you for in, your intelligence of thinking but ahead like that, point. but that's not the point. It's like you're, the, yeah, he, he didn't know what to do. I remember he actually looked at me and I think he was like, you're, you're just, so that's it. Like, that's it. You're just gonna, that's it. And he's, I was like, he's well, throw yeah. The towel now yeah. At this point, he huh? was, yeah, he was like, well, what if it doesn't come? Like he, he tried to, to sort of mental might me argue me like, well, what are you going to do if it doesn't arrive? What happens if situations change? And I was just like, no, it'll come. And then I walked out of the room. I was like, how, how old were you when this was Fucking going on? Seven. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were talking like 13, nah, 14. Dude, I was fucked up as a kid. I was so beyond my years in certain elements in terms of like certain ways of thinking, certain ways of conversing, relating to people, seeing things. I was very painfully observant as a kid. Um, mm -hmm. I was never really in the, mo I was, I was either deep, deep in the moment lost in time, or I was totally out of the moment. Like I'm looking at other things and planning for the next thing. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah. And I, I did, I remember um, fucking, Funniest story. I should probably say this on the Twitch. I'll tell this story on the Twitch channel and slice it up as another video. But I remember uh, when I went to high, when I went to fucking primary school, I didn't have any friends. When I went to prime, when, when I went to high school, I thought, well, this would be good. This would be different. Now I'll make friends because people are older now. They'll they'll talk like the adults that I've talked to. I grew up listening to adults talk. I didn't really go and hang out with kids for the first five to six years until I was five, six years old, and I went to school. But by then, my uh, my conversation skills were that of actors who were in their 30s, 40s, and 50s who were talking about theater and all this stuff. And I was like, so I kind of talked like that. I was a little fucking obnoxious, right? Uh, it works out now, but but I remember getting to high school, and then after the uh, after the first year, I got held back in. Cl <laughs> You're gonna love this. I got held back in class uh, for doing something, and. I was trying to, I just vividly remember saying to the teacher, she was ignoring me and I was being held back five minutes or whatever. And I said, <laughs> and keep in mind, her response was lightning fast. It was like, mm -hmm. it's like I asked her what time it was and she went, it's quarter to five. And I looked up at her and I said, she was drawing on the board. And I said, miss, how come nobody likes me? And she turned around and she said, well, Shimon, you're kind of annoying. And then she turned back again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I was 13. And, and I was like, oh, okay. And I remember thinking, in, I don't remember what the details were of why I had been held back or why I was annoying that day. But I remember mm -hmm. the reason that people were annoyed was because I was questioning things that hadn't really been brought up. They were related to what was being discussed, but they were just like, look, we're in school. It's fucking grade seven. We're not dealing with that shit yet. Well, let's just get through the class. And that mm -hmm. kid, that kid asked a question that, yes, he was, he was, a, there's other kid asked a question that was a stupid question that was trying to be distracting or whatever. But you went to like the 10th incarnation in a chess game of conversation that just doesn't fucking relate to this class right now. And people find that annoying. I wasn't being annoying on purpose. I, it's just annoying when a person is too far ahead of the curve on that one thing. I wasn't ahead of the mm -hmm. curve. I wasn't crazy intelligent. I wasn't saying I was better than anyone. But on that instance, I remember thinking, well, I was just bringing up stuff that you guys hadn't thought of yet, that you probably will think of next year in class. But you felt you chose to find it annoying. And I remember thinking in that moment, I'm probably not going to find a groove until I graduate from high school, till I'm about 20. When I find a group of people that are just talking about the same stuff that I'm interested in at the same level, at the same pace, you got to find your group. you got to find your, your clan or whatever you want to call it, your herd. And then when you find those people, you can give a fuck what anyone thinks. I didn't give the only difference between me and everyone else in high school was that I knew that I had yet to find my herd. And once I found a place in the world, I'd be fine. When you're in adolescence and you don't, you haven't found a place, you're terrified that it will never come. So you're mm -hmm. freaked and stressed the fuck out. 
the only difference between me was I was like, well, I'll just give it some time. I'm already ahead of the curve in a bunch of stuff. I already know what I want to do. I know I want to do creative stuff. I know that I'm good at it. I'm going to cultivate that skill set. I know that it's there's not many people that do it, so it'll probably take me a while to find a group of people. That's why when I met Emma in high school when I was 16, uh, we glatched onto each other for dear fucking life because we were both like, oh, someone who wants to play music by these bands and already knows yeah, this, some of these they songs. they like the same things I like. And Yeah, it was like, you know how to play uh, Green Day? Do you know that Pearl Jam song? You know Teen Spirit? Fuck yeah. Count it in. Off we go. Let's start a band. Done. You know, we fucking... We, Emma and I were tight at the first couple of years, man. We were like fucking peas in a pod. Yeah. Best friends. Best friends. Back in the day. Let me tell you about my best friend. Um, I was going to try to bring up another one of those uh, band battles, but I can't find one of the ones you've done recently. I thought I had one here. I guess I don't. Uh, but I do have a question that I, this is one I stumbled to on Reddit where somebody's just kind of, you know, music questions or things like that. And the the question that gets brought up here was from somebody saying, I've been playing guitar for about two years. However, I'm completely self-taught. This is a problem as I haven't been able to learn to read sheet music. What's the best way you would recommend learning if lessons aren't an option? Uh, go online and type in the names of songs into Google and then type chords and just go and learn how to play your favorite songs. That's how I learned. It's not the best way to do it, but that's how I learned. That would be my recommendation. Um, but is that how you're able to read sheet music? No. Do you want to learn how to read sheet music? Is they saying they want well, to learn how that's to read what the sheet person's, music? But that's what the person's saying is they say the problem is I'm not able to uh, to read sheet music. What's yeah. the best way you would recommend learning it if well, a lesson I'll, isn't an option? Oh, learning sheet so they, music. So they want to specific. Uh, yeah, they want to specifically like there's, this person saying they've been playing the guitar for two it, years now. Okay. Self taught. They can't read sheet music they want to learn Got to it. read sheet music uh the best thing you can do then is uh if you if learn if courses well you can fucking google anything now you can youtube anything all right i guarantee you if you were to go and search on youtube for five minutes you'd be able to find enough free lessons online that would get you started and then as soon as you can afford to go and sign up to one of those subscription places where they have all the classes lined up for you you just go and do that the truth is that's probably going to be cheaper and easier and more efficient. Nowadays, dude, everything's on fucking YouTube. Everything's available. Most of it's free. Don't get sucked into one thing you don't want to do. The, this is a big secret, big important thing for anyone who's trying to learn how to do anything related to music. When you find, and this is business. This is nothing bad about the people who do it. I'm going to fucking do it, okay? I'm going to do it. You go and you Google, how do I do something? You YouTube, how do I do something? You'll find a video. It'll show you the basics of how to do it. And then they will leave out the last 20%. And they'll mm -hmm. say, buy my product, sign up for my subscription service. At that point, don't go and sign up straight away. Go back to YouTube and type in that last 20% tutorial video. How do I do that last thing? And you might stumble upon another person's company that's like, okay, well, here's, how to, here's how to do this thing. And you can piece it together as you go, right? The reason that you want to sign up for a subscription site to do learning music theory, stuff like that, is if you find someone that you really like, they, they lay things out in a way that you can digest, they're, they're, they're the right person for you. You need to find the right teacher. You don't want to sign up to the first one that comes along because then you're, you're on it. You've spent money and then you're getting into mm -hmm. a whole fucking rabbit hole. So go shop and around shop bit. around a little bit. It's the same fucking thing. But you do need to find a teacher. You want to learn music theory. You, most people, you're not going to teach yourself music theory. You can teach yourself how to play songs. Music theory, you really do need to learn correctly. The Suzuki method is always the international standard for learning uh, music theory, depending on your age. Suzuki says that you should be starting around between four and seven years old. So obviously, mm -hmm. if you're older than that, you know, maybe have a look into it. But yeah, check it out. And that's what you do. That's how it works. But the... And that, that kind of um, – I can piggyback on that too when you're talking about like you know the age of people when they start to learn things. Remember, you're never too old to learn mm. anything at this point. Yeah. Uh, one of the websites that I go to frequently to do stuff is Khan Academy. It's K-H-A-N Academy. Have you ever been over is there at all? Is this some Star Trek shit? No. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Because no. it's the name of the bad guy in Star No, it's Trek. not like Wrath of Khan or anything like that. No. <laughs> I was like, no, Khan Academy, a, go and learn Klingon. I thought you were learning Klingon. No, 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 no. Khan Academy, 
Okay. I've learned um, – and this is – okay, if you want true nerd, uh, when I was working for the country radio stations about five, six, seven years ago. Yeah. I would just I would talk for maybe twenty seconds at a time. You're there to just kind of promote the music, do the giveaways, yeah. and be kind of funny if you can. It's just, but there's a lot of downtime where you just are. The, the songs are playing, and it was right. country. Like I, I I can respect it. There's yeah. a lot of really good country artists out there, like Chris Stapleton. I think we've agreed that that guy's badass. Yeah. Um and uh, and um and well and Zach Brown too. I got to give it to that guy. Mm. Uh, but what I would do is I would watch videos on chemistry. And Khan okay. Academy. And I would literally balance chemical equations while I was on the air in my free time. Like that's that's what I would do because I wanted to learn and I enjoyed chemistry. I was always really good at it. Um, and so I, I still have a full notebook sitting somewhere of all these equations of me b- that I would sit and balance while, you know, I'd, I'd crack the mic. It's like, hey, it's 98, seven the bowl. Here's Zach Brown. Blam, bam. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would go straight to, to, to doing this. And then another thing that I've gotten into recently is computer programming and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking um, about that. No, I don't think something... most people most people wouldn't think that about you. I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I would think that most people would think that you're like, maybe you're into some nerdy Star trek shit or whatever. But in terms of deep coding, like, yo, you're going to do mm-hmm. a course on coding? That's some fucking nerdy shit. That's oh, dude, I I I love this shit. Yeah. Um. I mean, and actually, you know what? I, piggybacking on that, anybody who's listening to this, you can tweet at Shim at Shim Moore, uh, or you can hit me up on Reddit uh, or on Instagram at the Real Brandalorian, or if or if you're able to find me on Twitter too, go ahead. Let me know. Do I seem like the kind of person that? is just kind of nerdy when it comes to like, oh, I like Star Wars and I like these nerdy things or I'm like nerd nerd where it's I'm learning how to write computer yeah. programs yeah. and how to code in Java and C++ and Python and, uh, you know, Jesus. all of these other programs. OK, yeah, fucking. Well, because one of the one of the things that something somebody just pointed out to me, too, was Harvard has these free classes, CS50. And that's something I've started doing. Um, is taking these free Harvard classes, um, and you can pay for them. Like if you want to get the official certificate, right? You can pay for it, or you can audit the course and just get like a pass fail, I think, and just and go through it. And that's really all I need for this stuff is right. I just kind of want to go through it. But Khan Academy, that is something, especially you being a dad, um, because it goes back to like kindergarten, first grade, second grade math stuff, right? For your kid. Um, right. So if they're struggling, or if you ever just want something for them to do. Um, by all means, I can't talk highly enough about Khan Academy. It's K-H-A-N Academy. What does it, what's it stand for? Khan? I think it's, I thought it's the guy's name who started it all. Oh, and there's another, there's a really cool program they have called, um, Imagineering in a Box. That's all about, they hooked up with Disney. And so it's, they have Disney Imagineers explaining to you about, how they create um, all these things the Imagineers create, like inside of the parks and how they come up with these different lands. Like if you go to California Adventure, California Adventure, you have the Cars Land. Yeah, yeah. How did they design it? What are they doing? What are right. they looking at? And that's one of the things that I, I'll, I'll watch videos on right, right. Um, as well. So, yeah, so I'm a, it's, I'm a, I'm a deep nerd. Um, right. A deep, deep, deep nerd. Oh, and they also have a thing called Pixar in a Box as well. That's another thing that they uh, – that they have that I've been following. So yeah, if you want to go check it out, Khan Academy, K H A N. It's a good plug. We Academy. should get them to sponsor us. Uh, I don't think that they could because when I first went to their website, it was like, please donate because we need your money. So I don't yeah. think. No, we need like. I don't uh, think they want to advertise. We need a Jack Daniels sponsorship. They got money for days. Everyone's <sighs> drinking Jack Daniels right now. I'd love a Jack uh, Daniels you know sponsorship, man. Ooh, this is how we should wrap up this podcast. Is we should go through and just start thinking right now of what are our ideal things. That we would want to promote whiskey, done. Yeah. I definitely whiskey, want to beer, that energy stuff. drink, like Rockstar Energy. Duh, we should totally do Rockstar Energy. They could. Yeah, I what? mean, I can't drink it, but I'd promote it. You can't drink that. It, I can't. Okay, it jacks you I up. I can't right? drink that. Yeah, yeah, I can't drink well, caffeine <coughs> anymore. I mean, I, I can drink minimal. You don't need to because I'm. I would drink either uh, Rockstar Energy or Red Bull before I would go on stage. So I'll there just be go. like, and Red Bull. You know, if they want to give us money, that's fine. But if rock, but Rockstar Energy, it's it's either on. See, yeah, like, yeah. Don't knock anybody yet because nobody's paying for this. Yeah, oh, yeah. And we, you know what? Damn it! I'm glad that we said this. I because also last used podcast, to drink Bang to Energy Drink out. and Monster Energy Drink and lots of different types of coffee. So there's lots of different options 
for the. Did Catherine... you ever drink balls? B a w l s. Did no. you ever drink balls? No. Balls was good. Yeah. Uh, balls was legit. Um, we also, I'm glad that we're bringing this up as we're getting ready to wrap up this episode of the podcast, just so we can give a shout out to our supporters again, Victoria Kellerman and Taryn Weiniger. Um, uh, yes. If you want to support us, you can head on over to anchor.fm slash rockstar101. You'll find the link there um, so that you can actually become a, a, a supporter, a supporter. Um, of us so that you can give us money for, you know, basically listening to us. Even though you can get it for free. But, yeah, no, but that's, that's the point. That's why we appreciate it and we're giving the shout outs because you do not yeah. need to pay for it. But we deeply appreciate the fact that you're supporting us in a world that does not really financially support people to do what we do anymore. The business is taking all the money out of it. So we appreciate your which support. Which is why, which is why we need sponsors. So yeah, well, I mean, like I'm right now, I'm wearing all Nike stuff. Nike, if you <laughs> want to hook it up, because I came from the gym. I got my Nike shirt. I got some Nike shorts. I got Nike shoes on right now. Excellent. Uh, Bose. I'm telling you right now, uh, Bose headphones. I love you. That's funny. Although, I, and that's great. This, he, you like I'm Bose? Wearing, I like I'm Beats. Saying this, I'm wearing Sennheiser. Yeah. Well, I like Beats. Let's get a Beat. Let's just get really? some. Really? Nothing wrong with Beats. Sen, Bose are great as well. There's lots of great headphones. You know the best Man, ones? You know I, the best headphones in the world? The ones that, that give us money to say the names. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct, sir. Yeah, man, but I'm telling you, like, whiskey. You know what I was thinking, too, is beard oil. I need a beard oil yeah. company yeah. to sponsor. And I've looked it up because they have this thing. It's called the Beard Struggle. And um, I think a beard oil company you become would become like. They probably, they probably want to do one that's like a podcast about having a beard, right? Well, I, I have a beard. What, what do you want me to talk about? <laughs> I don't want you to talk about your beard. <laughs> you don't want me to talk about my beard? Um, but yes, it's called The Beard Struggle. And I'm technically a brand. They, they call them brand Vikings. Like I just filled out the stuff and they, they liked my Instagram, I guess. So mm -hmm. they – I'm a, and I have my own codes and stuff, but I don't know what I did with them. So I should probably put that on social media. Mm. Um, but it, here's, here is a solid plug for them. I have tried multiple – different beard oils and it's hands down the best one because it a smells the best and b doesn't cause my skin to break out are, are you sure you want to be saying problem. this stuff considering there might be a competing beard oil company that wants to give you a bunch of money and you just put that on the record this is one this is this, this is, is the most one that, that you've used. used to this is the most this recent is, this one is, okay i'm going to protect you right now this is the most recent gonna, one that you've used no, and up. you're very open shut to up. changes shut up shut up shut up shut up <laughs> i'm not going to throw anybody specifically under the bus so if anybody wants to try it, sure. But I'm telling you right now, like the Beard Struggle Beard Oil, it's the only one that has kind of caused – like it doesn't cause my face to break out and stuff. So go to the Beard Struggle. And I find my codes. You can get a discount too. It's so like I'm, I mean I can do that if I want to. I just don't – like why do people give a shit what I like? Like that's my biggest thing I whenever agree, it comes to sponsors. But people, I'm always I... like why – does anybody give an ever living because, bleep about what the hell I'm doing? Because Am I that important? Because no. they're listening to you right now. If they're listening to you right now, then they care. I agree, man. I was surprised when anyone liked my music. I really was. I was like, I wanted people to like it, but I was surprised when they did. And then when they were like, can we have more? And here's a record deal. And here, yeah. and, then, and then they're like on Twitch. They ask me on the Hollywood Rebellion Twitch stream. Yeah. Uh, any Anything they want to hear. I'm like, really? You want to hear that? Yeah. I mean, Guffnasm is reading... Uh, he's doing readings now. That's the thing that's on the, the streams at the moment. We've got to wrap this up over time. But yeah. Guffnasm is reading poems and short stories and things like that on his channel because the fans said, we'd like you to do that. And there are people that like it. And I remember he called me and he was like, is this the thing people do? And I said, yeah, it is. Did they yeah, ask you? you and he said, yeah. I'd do I said, a we'll reading. fucking do it. Somebody should, somebody should send send us something and Shim and I will we'll act it out or we'll no, do something. No, no, I'm, we'll I'm not dancing. I'm not dancing. I'm not dancing yet. Dance, just a reading. <laughs> Look, on that I'm going to show you something. Let's, Look, okay, I'm going to show, show you something really quick. Okay, shut me. up, shut up. Because this is my Spotify. I was flipping through my old Spotify playlist, and I had one that was called Start. Because when Spotify first started, it didn't have hearts. It was a star. And right. if you liked that song, you hit the star, and it sent it to a playlist called Start. Right. This is my Start playlist. Can you see what's on there? Oh, Jesus Christ. There's heaps of my stuff. What? That's all my stuff. Oh, the, that and a bunch of other things, right? Well, yeah, but this right. is this. I wanted to make sure that all of your stuff got liked, and this was I did this long before I ever met you. That's awesome. Um, this would have been, God, ten years ago. I think that's it was funny. right when Spotify first came out. That's dope. so. That's that's all that all that stuff right there. That's awesome, man. 
That's cool, man. Thanks for showing me I'm that. Still on the sick puppy stuff, and then it goes into the uh, Limp Biscuit Gold Cobra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Golden Cobra. All right. On that note, let me get through the socials here really quick. If you want to hit up Shim, you can find him over on Twitter. It is at Shim Moore, S-H-I-M-M-O-O-R-E. Make sure you check him out on Twitch as well. It is twitch.tv slash The Hollywood Rebellion. You can also find him over on his Facebook page. He has a YouTube channel that is Shimon Moore. So you can actually see these. If you're only listening to this podcast, you can see them. So you can see me scrolling through my phone or you can see me. No. <laughs> Popping my tooth out. <laughs> you didn't want that? I thought we were going to wrap no, this. No, I'm just like, let them, let them leave with a nice image for their weekend, ah. mate. Well, then I'm going to, for the weekend, no, this episode's dropping on Tuesday. So this is right in there for your week, man. Okay, You know cool. how we feel? We feel toothless. There's a huge gap right here. <laughs> uh, you can find me over on Instagram or Reddit. It is at the real Brandalorian. If you ever want to have a question or a topic or anything for us, uh, by all means, fire away. We love getting that stuff. Mm. I do get a little bit bogged down on the Instagram stuff. I know that there's been some people reaching out to me. Um, Lucia, our good friend Lucia, Lucia. Rose. Um, she has sent me some messages. I apologize that I haven't uh, responded back yet. Um, but uh, by all means, fire away. Send us some messages if you want to top topic, questions, whatever it may be. But on that note, his name is Shim. He is the rock star. His name is Brandon. He is the DJ. Watch this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Say it in the Class voice. Class is missed. Class is missed. Oh.